Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna do our daily technical analysis update of commodities. We're gonna work our way through the dollar, yields, precious metals, and commodities and ETFs that I follow. Um, I'm gonna give you my financial opinions. And if you guys need any help with anything, check out finding-value.com. Uh, you can sign up, join our community. Uh, we talk a lot about, obviously, investments, especially in particular to commodities, as that is what I think uh, is in favor. And, and some of these are going to be in favor when liquidity comes into the system. Uh, others are going to be in favor when liquidity is slowing down. So uh, let's go through it and I'll give you my opinion. So the first one is the DXY, and this is on a weekly times time scale or time frame. We've had a little topping pattern here. That's This is generally when we tighten all up, our dollar strengthens against other currencies as our monetary conditions are tighter than their monetary conditions. Uh, you can see this thing's obviously rolled over uh, and our dollar has been getting weaker against some of those other currencies as theirs have been strengthening. Uh, recently, we've got kind of a battle going on between the buyers and sellers uh, of the DXY, so to speak, and we've just been slowly leaking off here on the right-hand side with some selling pressure uh, but I do think we're going to find a bottom maybe right here where we start to track on higher the DXY in the short term. Uh, I don't see much selling pressure. Uh, I don't see the big red army candlesticks uh, just overwhelming the buyers. There is a little bit of a struggle between the buyers and sellers here. So I do think uh, maybe slightly higher to sideways is what I think until we get more selling pressure in the DXY. Uh, TNX bouncing higher today. Uh, up 4.4%. Yields generally, like when yields get stronger and the yield curve inverts, oil does very well. Or conversely, when oil does well, uh, this tenure likes to go up. Now, we've got a battle between fear in the markets, which brings this yield curve lower, versus the underlying structural deficits in some of these commodities, like oil uh, specifically, that wants to bring it on up. Uh, we also have inflation still being driven from the real estate market, but it has definitely slowed way down. So what force is going to win? Is it going to be oil translating that inflation into uh, products and, and goods and services? Uh, or is the fear in the market and the slowdown of liquidity from the housing market going to win? Now, if I were to take an objective approach here, I do think this kind of looks like a little bit of a Batman where we could head lower. Hey there, Batman, what's going on? So that's Batman pattern. And obviously I hit that too early. Is this going to roll down or are we going to bounce back up? We bounce back up into resistance here. So we're right on resistance. Let's see what this what happens here. And see if we get a larger bounce. I am in the camp uh, ever since we had this large selling pressure move here that we have a possibility that this can go lower, indicating that the curve is uninverted. Uh, it doesn't mean that every day it will do that, but uh, if the curve normalizes or it's uninverting, you know, we have an inverted curve versus it uninverting, uh, that does mean that uh, other assets in commodities will do well. I'll just say that. Uh, bond prices heading down. We we're up against this resistance line. We did come back to the downside a little bit there. And then the 30-year yield is also higher. It wasn't as high as the 10-year yield, uh, but this still looks pretty good for potentially a move higher uh, if it wants to go that way. And we'll have to watch to see which way this this curve goes. TYX, TNX, that is the relationship between the 30-year yield and the 10-year yield. If we back out a little bit, gain ourselves a little bit perspective, this is when the curve is inverting, when it's going down. When the curve is uninverting, it's broken and going up. Well, we've broken this trend line here. We kind of squeezed up. We broke the trend line right there. And we've got a we could potentially have a return move where we come back down before heading higher. And right now we have that return move. 
So the curve inverted today, and it's by no. Um, it, <laughs> that's when oil goes up. Put it that way. So. There's the curve on a long term. We can see this large, big green candlestick on the monthly. Uh, I do think this could potentially go up. That's generally when gold and silver do very well. The the two year yield, just to show you guys the two year yield, um, we've got a nice big downtrend. We've broken that downtrend there in 2022, uh, early 2022. We've come all the way up, and what generally happens is you break the downtrend and then you get a return move. This return move, which potentially can happen, will have a, it's basically telling us that a problem could be in the system. And if I zoom into the one year, you can see the rapid decline here um, that was associated with that bank problem. We've got these wicks at the bottom. There's a little bit of support down here, so we're probably going to bounce up. And then if you look at it from a little bit longer term perspective, uh, this could be a shoulder head shoulder that will develop. And maybe we go back down here. Uh, this here would be a scare in the system, and they would probably lower interest rates over time for this to happen. So that's what I think might happen. And there might be some good investments based off of what we're seeing in the dynamics here. The CRB to... Uh, or this is just commodities, the straight up commodities. Now, what we want to see if it's going to be bullish is we've got this resistance line here. We want to see this break to the upside of that resistance, reclaim it and move on up if we're in uh, a scenario of, of a bull case. If we're in a bear case, we're going to hit our head here and we're going to roll back over. Uh, if we roll back over and we see those yields dropping, uh, I do think that we are going to encounter a slowdown uh, very, you know, we're going to encounter a slowdown. I don't know how soon. Uh, it could be very soon. It could be some months out. It could be a month or two or three or four, whatever it is. Uh, but we could see a slowdown in the, in, the, in the markets. And this is where we might want to take more of a defensive stance uh, if we cannot reclaim that resistance line. CRB to S&P 500 still looking all right. We're just moving sideways in it. And remember, even if the markets go down, the S&P may go down faster than commodities. So this may still go up in that scenario. Gold down lower today, but I still think this looks very good. Big picture view on the, on the weekly candlesticks. Very nice drive all through here of the buyers beating the sellers, the big green candlesticks. Not too much selling pressure happening here recently either. Uh, if we were going to really... Uh, put a top in, what I would think we would see is a nice strong reversal candlestick when we get up here. These nice strong reversal candlesticks um, coming up. We don't have one yet. There's no strong reversal candlestick. So I think that we have a possibility of breaking to the upside for gold and getting a little bit of run. Gold also likes to run when that two-year yield slows down and reverses and the curve uh, normalizes or uninverts. So the, the market conditions are ripe for gold to run. And gold looks ripe from the candlesticks, looking at it from this perspective to run higher as well. The daily, we were down a little bit. We do have a wick at the bottom. We'll see what uh, is transpiring behind us. If gold's about to run, we would see people positioning in GDX and SILJ before the run. So we'll look at those and see if they're positioning before gold runs. Silver down a little bit. It doesn't look too bad, guys. We still have much larger buying pressure than selling pressure. Uh, it doesn't mean that we're just going to pop higher immediately, although we could. Uh, we could see a little bit of a pullback like this, and then we pop higher. Uh, either way, I, I don't see the sellers yet. We, For me to change my mind, and they could come tomorrow, we want to see, if you want it to go down, we want to see selling pressure where we get a bearish engulfing or something like that, where we actually get a bunch of selling pressure. I don't think that's going to come. I think we're going to have small selling pressure. And I think the buyers are going to continue to push it higher uh, over time. Platinum also getting small selling pressure today. Doesn't look too bad at all. Um, it's just moving sideways. If this was going to launch to the downside, we would see a 
large selling pressure candlestick uh, show up sometime here shortly if it's going to go lower. Uh, so that's what we're looking for. We're looking for either a buying pressure candlestick or a selling one to give us a direction. We are squeezing up. XAU to gold ratio. Notice what is happening here. We don't have strong selling pressure in gold. It's holding above support. It looks very good in a cup and handle formation. And XAU to gold ratio is putting in positive signals for a potential move to the upside. So people are positioning in gold and silver, irrespective of gold being down. That means something. It means that we could potentially start to move higher, especially if gold moves higher, the gold and silver mining companies. So when I look at this and we take a big picture view of this, the market conditions for the yields are ripe for gold to go higher. They are changing in favor of it. GDX is starting to outperform a lot of the other ETFs, and we're starting to get, hopefully, higher lows stepping up into a resistance line. And if we break this, this is the, the, the line to break for happiness. This is where a lot of investors will be happy for their gold and silver mining companies that comes once every decade or less than that of a big breakout. So that is looking in, in, in increasingly better. Uh, for the gold and silver mining companies here. GDX, barely lower today, and it was it held up very strong. Very positive signals for the gold and silver mining companies, although gold was down today, which means that the people don't believe that the selling pressure today was really that legit. Uh, basically, it got sold off and everyone was buying the gold and silver mining companies. SILJ actually ended up with a bullish piercing. Uh, so this is looking very good for um, the silver miners and gold miners. I'm getting a lot more bullish on it. Uh, I can also, let's grab some of these. Let's see if we can get a uh, little bit better candlestick or uh, drawing here. I didn't really, haven't really updated it in a while. So let, that's what it looks like right now. Uh, we've got kind of a squeezing up of a, falling wedge, and hopefully we can break to the upside at some point. May not be ready yet, but uh, it is looking better. Crude oil, uh, taking a shellac into the price, going way up today. Uh, this is on 5.3%. Now, this is on a weekly candlestick. If we're going to break higher here, what I'd like to see is we, need, we want to break. Let me throw in something that's a little better than that. We want to break this first, and we're right there trying to break through it. We want to definitely break, if we're in a new uptrend, this resistance area in 81. Let's just say we close at 82 or so. So we got this channel that we're basically bouncing back and forth. We're on the downside. We broke into that downside of that channel. We're coming back up. And let, we, we want to see if this is going to put a little wick at the top and roll back down, or if we're going to break back into the channel and then go break back above $81, $82, which puts us in an uptrend. It's a higher high is what I'm looking for. Right now, we've got a lot of work cut out ahead of us for crude oil to move higher. Uh, we also have the yields starting to come down, and they are signaling that fear is in the market. and Money could be rotating differently in the market, uh, and it could be favoring gold over oil and some of these other commodities. Natural gas still heading lower, down 5.8%. Uh, and I, I think that what we're doing is we're probably going to put in a double bottom of some sort uh, and come all the way back to this general area of where it bottomed first. So that's probably where we're going to go. And we still haven't broken this downtrend line yet. XOP, yeah, you know me. Uh, heading up higher, what I see here is a bullish engulfing, kind of a bullish piercing. So we, we moved on higher. Uh, and what we want to see is we want to see a big move to the upside. Here's the problem, though. We were up 2.8% on XOP, which is supposed to be a leveraged, you know, a leveraged uh, move to the price of oil, but oil was up 5.26%. What's with the disconnect? And what I think is happening is that oil, people are rotating from oil and maybe some of these other commodities, energy per se, into precious metals based off the market conditions. And that's what uh, we're seeing in yields, and that's what yields are telling us. 
So we didn't get that huge bounce, and I'm going to continue to watch it. Uh, if we come back for the for the weeklies, we still have these large selling pressure days, and you can see that the buying pressure is weaker than the selling pressure. It's taking more days to move up and faster to move down. And we're also getting that over here. See how we got two small weekly candlesticks and then the large selling pressure. That generally means that people are selling this and we could see lower uh, a move lower. Now, it doesn't mean that we're just going to crash, but this is a inverted head and shoulders, shoulder, head, shoulder, and maybe we come back and create another bottom of that shoulder. That is what may potentially happen. OIH uh, also, you know, is up 4.3%. Pretty good day. Uh, but we still have all this selling pressure in here. All this selling pressure. And yeah, we got a little bit of a bounce today. We want to see if, if this is going to stick, this bounce will continue higher. If it's not going to stick, we'll see this roll back over. Uh, and, and that depends on the buyers here and what they want to do. We have seen in this kind of area going this way, lots of selling pressure start to work its way through. So it does look like we could potentially head a little bit lower in OIH in the short term. Uh, Sprout Physical Uranium Trust, that's also getting that selling pressure. You can kind of see it. So we're coming on up. We're getting some selling pressure, selling pressure. It's been going back and forth. Um, and, you know, we've got the selling pressure here. Uh, are we going to go mo move higher or are we going to go lower? We got to see some buying pressure step in here if we want to move higher. Uh, the sellers have shown their hand. We've got this block here, more selling pressure. The block here, more selling pressure. The block here, more selling pressure. This still looks like it wants to go lower in the short term, in my opinion, based off of the candlesticks and what they're and how they're trading. We are taking far fewer candlesticks to move a lot longer distance lower than what we are taking to move higher. Two candlesticks, a whole bunch, uh, which means that the force behind these moves is people are selling and then a lot fewer people are buying it up. And then you get another impulse move down. And that's wearing on that. URNM, it's up a little bit. Again, we got to see buying pressure if we want to move higher here. We've got a lot of selling pressure through here uh, coming on down. And right now it's just stair-stepping lower. And that has not turned at this time until I see some buying pressure step in. Tan. Also, uh, a little bit of selling pressure today. It's basically flat, but uh, we're coming right to the corner there. We'll see which way it breaks. COPX, which is the copper ETF. Come on, copper. Come on. Uh, so down a little, you know, is this a head and shoulders where we are going to eventually head lower? It very well could be. Uh, I was looking at bank stocks. They look like total garbage. Um and we, maybe we could see a move lower here in the short term uh, in these. So, yeah, that's what I'm seeing. And this definitely does look like a potential head and shoulders that is developing where we could see a downward move in the short term. That is a potential uh, possibility. Lithium. Lithium still moving sideways. I don't really have too much to say here. I'm just kind of see what the pattern is. Uh, this is kind of a shoulder head shoulder, but that's already kind of playing out already. And you could say shoulder head shoulder, where we get a move lower potentially. So I'm starting to see these shoulder head shoulders come up. And with the yields turning over like they did, uh, I do think that we could see some selling pressure in the short term, short to medium term. There's uh, REMX that's continuing to grind lower. That's where we're at, and we do not have buying pressure on this side over here. Buyers have not showed up and said they're there, so we could see further downside. Uh, S&P 500, up 0.17%. I do think this could potentially head lower. There we go. Selling pressure, not much buying pressure. This could roll over to the downside on a weekly candlestick basis. Uh, and, and how I'm looking at this is I just don't see a ton of buying pressure in relationship to the selling pressure. Now, that doesn't mean it can't go higher. I'm just saying, statistically speaking, what I've seen looking at charts, it could potentially head lower if that fear creeps back into the market. Uh, it's there, and 
the fear is residing in the very short term, but we want to see if the fear is still there. When I look at this, this portion there and I go to the weeklies, you can see the large selling pressure and the buying pressure is not as strong coming back up. So the fear is still there and we can roll over. Uh, composite index down, and this is a reversal candlestick on the daily of a bearish piercing where we could head lower. Uh, so I am seeing more and more bearish piercing, or that's bearish engulfing, bearish piercing there. Two in a row. This could head lower with the fear in the market. EEM, that's eh, holding on there, not doing too bad. I know it was a down day, but momentum's to the upside. Still hanging in there. XHB. Uh, moving on sideways doesn't look horrible, and this does look like we've got a little bit of a double bottom going on, so that actually looks not too bad. We've got Moo. Uh, Moo does look like, you know, shoulder head. And we've broken to the downside of this, so we could see some downside pressure in Moo. So that's Moo there. We've got Copper. Good old Copper. Now, is copper putting in a head and shoulders I, or, or a Batman pattern? There's Batman. Hey, Batman, what's going on? <laughs> but um, it's holding in there, and we're above support. The support is this support line going across. We've got lots of buying and selling that's happened through here. Uh, that is acting as support, and it's holding quite strong. We do have shortages of copper, I think, in the future. Uh, deficits is what I should say, and maybe that's what's holding this thing up. But we do have a slowdown in the overall markets and a lot of fear in the markets that we're seeing. So it's uh, it's battling against each other. Lumber, uh, get a little bit more selling pressure here, especially with that fear in the market, but it is still above support and it's holding and grinding sideways. That support is the long-term support of this guy here all the way back since 93. Iron ore, do we've got... Do we have selling pressure? I mean, what I see in iron ore, we can kind of draw this through here. Uh, I see something on the lines of that. We broke to the upside. Maybe we get a return move before heading on up. Iron ore is a lot more exposed to China. Nickel. Nickel heading higher, but is this the Batman pattern that's coming out? It could be. So there it is. Ba-boom. And we'll see if we get more selling pressure or if the buyers come in and send it to the upside. Right now, the sellers are winning. Uh, aluminum, uh, it is moving sideways in the short term, but up 1% to, on the dailies. Uh, but it is kind of just grinding sideways in this short term here. Baltic Dry Index, we are popped on higher we are sideways today and we're just moving sideways we could come back and do a retest uh, if it decides to do that newcastle coal slightly lower this thing's got a shellacking uh, we broke out here we did kind of a return move here and then we have the uh the dump the the big pooper out out the the bunghole there it's going down but um i do think we're gonna probably find some area down here where we find support uh, base out and then start to turn higher. You could say that's a shoulder head shoulder as well, uh, head and shoulders. Ethereum, uh, I would say this is almost opposite. If we put it on logarithmic, you can almost say, let's go to the dailies. Let's go to the dailies, guys. Just kidding. Oh, this is Ethereum. That's why. We broke to the upside. I was looking at Bitcoin earlier uh, and it was down today. Good, good chunk down today. And we could see some moves lower with that bearish engulfing that we have today. The the seller showed up in uh, Ethereum. Bitcoin, the sellers also showed up 3.5% down. Uh, we could see a little bit of a move lower. Overall, though, this does look pretty good. Uh, let's, let's zoom out a little bit. We've got this uh, inverted head and shoulders with a breakout. And then we've got small selling pressure, even though we could come back, maybe do a retest or whatever. But uh, that actually looks not too bad. So uh, that's what we've got for today, guys. And I'm I'm waffling back and forth between, you know, I, I'm seeing bearish signs all throughout the the area. So yeah, that's that's what I'm seeing. And we could have a pullback here in the short to medium term. We could have a recession. There could be problems with the banking system. 
Uh, that fear definitely could be in the in the system, and maybe perhaps uh, interest rates and the market conditions have uh, influenced money to leave the banking system uh, in search of higher yields with bonds and treasury bills and all sorts of stuff, depleting the reserve ratios of those banks. People yanking money out of the banks then puts pressure on the banks because they are short reserves. Uh, they don't have the cash. And if they have to sell assets and they put, parked a bunch of assets over in bonds, well, now they're going to lose bonds. You know, they're losing money principal if they go to sell those bonds. So they're in a rough spot. And perhaps the contagion and the, the match has been lit. It's going to uh, spread like wildfire. And, and maybe that's out in the future. Uh, but doesn't mean that we don't have a bounce higher to create another shoulder in uh, yields. And, and maybe that's when we get the rollover. We'll see. Uh, I'm watching this stuff like, like a hawk. We talked about it on the Platinum Question and Answer session, what I'm seeing in the markets. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what I've got for today. So hopefully you guys enjoy the content. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.